A 39-year-old American given up his attempt to cross the Atlantic Ocean while suspended from 370 helium balloons. Jonathan Trapp was just 12 hours into his trip when he landed in Newfoundland, Canada. Uh, Trapp spent two years, though, preparing for this flight. But five people have died in similar attempts, so glad to say he's okay. Well, if there's something uh, called quickie diplomacy, if it exists, this is it. After only three days of talks in Geneva, Secretary of State John Kerry and his Russian counterpart agreed today on a deal that would get rid of Syria's chemical weapons arsenal. Now, remember, this was not on anybody's radar this time last weekend. The plan gives Syria just one week to turn over a complete inventory of its chemical weapons. Then experts would begin destroying the chemical weapons. They hope they can get this done by mid-2014. If Syria fails to comply, the deal leaves open the possibility the UN Security Council could consider a use of force resolution. So let's look at the political implications of this deal for President Obama, Russian President Vladimir Putin. Uh, Amy Holmes is conservative commentator and anchor for TheBlaze.com. She joins us from New York. In Washington, Democratic strategist Maria Cardona. Good to have both of you with us. I want to start with you, Maria. What does this mean for the president? Well, I think what it means, uh, Victor, is that uh, he's going to continue to push a diplomatic solution. It's what he's wanted from the very beginning. Uh, there's no doubting that this president does not want to go to war. He, frankly, uh, campaigned and won on uh, staying out of Iraq or wanting to end that, that war and has done so. And clearly he has been very pained to make sure that uh, Syria does what they need to do and President Assad does what he needs to do by threatening a military strike. So I think this really leads him to, to try to use this diplomatic solution as a way out. But what has been very interesting is that it has also been his steely resolve to never take military force off of the table that actually created this opening and made sure that Syria and Russia were, uh, were put to the test, essentially, in saying that we are going to strike you if you don't do the right thing here. Steely resolve, chemical Maria. weapons has always been the point. Steely resolve. I want to get to Amy, but steely resolve, it's been from two years ago, Assad must go to I'm going to uh, order a strike and then we're going to Congress and then wait Congress how about this process Amy what does this mean for the president I, I'm sure you disagree with Steely Resolve but also <laughs> President Putin uh, you know I like my theater on Broadway not in foreign policy I laughed I cried it was better than cats I mean what we've been watching unfolding here has been a debacle from start to finish what this means for President Obama is as Maria said is a way out a way out of a mess of his own creation uh, Vladimir Putin has outmaneuvered him very expertly he even took a victory lap in the New York Times this week to lecture us about democracy and not threatening uh, force and military strikes around the world which is something actually Vladimir Putin has engaged in himself uh, you know basically this is a reprieve for the president what this means is it kicks the ball it kicks the can down the road and six months from now we won't be talking about Syria anymore if anything it just gets this sort of off of the president's plate uh, let's watch a clip of uh, the president from Tuesday night his address to the nation and then we'll talk about it on the other side with modest effort and risk we can stop children from being gassed to death and thereby make our own children safer over the long run I believe we should act that's what makes America different that's what makes us exceptional and Amy, you referenced that op-ed of the New York Times uh, from Russian President Vladimir Putin. He wrote this, it's extremely dangerous to encourage people to see themselves as exceptional, whatever the motivation. Uh, what do you think about that comment? I remember uh, distinctly uh, Senator Menendez saying it made him want to vomit. <laughs> he did say that. And, uh, of course, it's very ironic coming from a Russian leader who's frequently shirtless while he's hunting and <laughs> using rifles and on horses and fishing. Clearly, Vladimir Putin thinks of himself as exceptional. And he's been exceptional, exceptionally, I think, savvy in exploiting the president's weakness, lack of resolve, and spinelessness. I mean, let's remember, President Obama told Medvedev before the election that uh, to transmit the message that he would have more flexibility. Little did we know that that meant removal of the spine. Maria, no. <laughs> let me obviously, yeah, go ahead. What if, if the president uh, signs this deal and he goes ahead with Russia 
and Syria does not live up to their uh, agreement, to this agreement, but instead they live up to the uh, reputation. What does that mean for the president, especially in moving forward, hoping for some military strike? Well, and this is what I mean by steely resolve, Victor. He has never taken the threat of military force off the table. The rollout of this was, yes, absolutely messy, absolutely muddled. But at the end of the day, the president has never uh, deviated from his priority of two things, making sure to hold Assad accountable for his use of chemical weapons. And more importantly, the priority is to make sure that he did not have the opportunity to use those chemical weapons again. Yes. Yes, he went to Congress because he said that we would be stronger as a country with that kind of support. And I think everybody agrees with that. But he never said that he would not attack Syria without the, the, the approval of Congress or the U.N. He has still not taken that off the table. Do you think that if he, has, if, if he had wavered in that military strike uh, desire or at least saying we're going to do this, do you think that Putin and Assad would be here actually doing today uh, announcing this pretty historic uh, agreement? Well, and yes, we have to be skeptical, Assad, but it is a way forward Assad, with diplomacy, which Assad is what everybody wanted. Assad said that this, the, the threat of force had nothing to do with it, but uh, there will be some obviously and we who believe don't believe him. him. <laughs> right. Amy Holmes, exactly. Maria Cardona, the conversation will continue on the Hill and around dinner tables. We thank you for having it with us here. Thank you, Victor. Thank you very much. All right, up next, it was the second largest dogfighting ring ever busted. Well, in August, officials rescued more than 350 dogs that had been beaten and brutalized. And up next, we're going to take you inside the secret location where they're being nursed back to health. Are you sensitive to dairy? Then you'll love lactose-free lactate. It's 100% real milk that's easy to digest, so you can fully enjoy the dairy you love. Lactaid, for 25 years, easy to digest, easy to love. There's a reason why Spider ETF investors usually find what they want. They know where to look. Before investing, consider the funds, investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses. Call 1-866-787-2257 for a prospectus containing this information. Read it carefully. I'm Beth. And I'm Michelle. And we own the Paper Cottage. It's a stationery and gift store. That's cute. What's that? Anything we purchase for the Paper Cottage goes on our ink card. So you can manage your business expenses and access.